Daniel this morning, the book of Daniel. I want us to look at chapter number 3. I'm going to read uh, just three verses as I open this morning, but I do have uh, several other verses that I'd like to read. I believe that the Lord will have me to share with you a message today about the fourth man in the fire. The fourth man in the fire. And I say today that that fourth man is a special man. That fourth man is one that's greater than any other man. Amen. That fourth man is one uh, that can reach further down than you can ever reach up. Uh, that fourth man is the one that as I was swinging over hell on a sewing thread, extended His grace and mercy and pulled me into His loving yeah. arms and cared for me. Amen. That fourth man is the man that can save your soul. Amen. That fourth man is the man that saved these three Hebrew children we're going to read about this morning. That fourth man is the King of all kings Amen. and the Lord of all lords. He Amen. is uh, the great I Am. He is the Creator and Sustainer of all things. He is Jesus, our Redeemer. As we read these verses this morning in chapter number 3, look with me in verse 23 here. Verse number 23, Daniel chapter number 3. And the Bible says, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselor, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto, unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth man is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near at the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Let's pray together. Father, we love you today. We come before your throne as, as someone, Father, that's unworthy to stand where I stand. But by the grace of God, I stand here called. I pray, Father, that you would anoint me from on high. God, that your word would be preached through the mouths and lips of this vessel. Lord, that you would hide me behind the center cross. Give me unction, I pray, and liberty and power from on high. Lord, we thank you for the good songs in the choir this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we're on the winning side. We thank you, God, that we have a God that loves us and cares for us. And, Father, that you will be in the fire with us in the, in the trials and the disappointments of life, that you can help us in the midst of the trials and the fires that we face. Lord, would you help us today as we preach? Lord, would you hide us again behind the center cross as I stand where no man can stand long? I certainly need anointing from thy Holy Spirit. Your word says to be filled with the Spirit. And I pray that you would fill me, this your vessel, this morning. Use me, I pray mightily. I would speak to that heart, uh, Lord, that may be lost and undone without thee today. To speak to that heart, Lord, that needs you, uh, Father, to come in and be the Savior and Redeemer of their life. Lord, speak to that one, Lord, that's standing at a guilty distance, maybe with unconfessed sin. Maybe pray, uh, pray God today you speak to that one, uh, Father, that's family, or maybe their marriage, or maybe their job. Maybe something's going on, Lord, that uh, uh, is out of their control. Lord, would you speak to that one as well? Lord, we just ask to be used of you today. Do a mighty work, I pray. And we'll be careful, God, to give you the glory, honor, and the praise. For it's in Jesus' name I pray and ask all these things. Amen. Amen. Today, man, I feel a little better now, Brother Bobby. I feel like I've got a hold of heaven there. I appreciate the opportunity. Let me say this to preach the Word of God to you folks. The most precious thing I believe that we can do is tell the world what the Bible says. We need to be witnesses. We need to be just like these three Hebrew boys and Daniel that was right there with them. Uh, we pray that God would help us to be uh, to stand firm and to be firm in our faith as these these young men were. The story of, th of these three which are thrown into the fiery furnace this morning begins in chapter number 1. If you will, turn back with me over into chapter number 1 of the book of Daniel. And look with me as I read just several verses here, but bear with me because I want you to understand the context of what we're talking about today. These three Hebrew children, along with Daniel, of course the, the writer and the author of this book, a, a mighty prophet of God, these men stood up whenever no one else was staying. Right. These men stood up in the midst of a fire, in the midst of a time of turmoil, right. in the midst of captivity. And I say to you today, that uh, God's children, it's time for us to stand up. Yes, it's time for us to stand up for what's right. It's yes, time for us to put our feet
lean on the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ, and say, I will not be moved. Yes. And say that we are, we are firm in our, our belief system, that we believe the Bible and we want to live by it. And see, these, these young men, as we'll read here, look with me in chapter 1 and verse number 3. The Bible says, And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, of the king's seed, and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach learning, the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of, king, of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nursing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah Sh uh, uh, of Shadrach, and of Mishael, uh, Meshach and of Azar and to Azariah Abednego. So he changed their names here. Yeah. Now let me share with you as I was thinking about the names this morning. Let me share with you what these names mean, and then we'll read a little further. The name Daniel means God is judge. Mm -hmm. And can I say this morning that God will yeah. judge yes. not only our nation, Amen. but every human being that ever walked the face of this earth Amen. will stand before Almighty God. You know, I've been standing some morning, some of you may have seen me out here in Abbey Hills holding up a cross in the Bible. Some of y'all may have wondered who that crazy man was out there, but that's me. Amen. And I tell you, it's amazing what I see standing out there on the side of 64. I've had more than one person uh, tell me I was number one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure right. I've had more than one person uh, turn and face the woods. They face the tree. Yeah. Turn away from the cross and the Word of God. Yeah. And you know, uh, uh, when those things happened, the Lord spoke to my heart. And I say to you today, He broke my heart. Yeah. Because there's a generation of people in our world today that are going to hell at breakneck speed. Yeah. Yeah. God is my judge is the meaning of Daniel's name. And God spoke to my heart whenever that lady showed me her middle finger. And God spoke to my heart when those cars would go by and turn the other way and look away from that cross and look away from the Bible. And He said, they may look away from your cross and they may look away from my Word, but one day they'll stand with face Amen. to face to me. See, God is the judge. And He's ultimately going to judge the whole world. But they changed his name to Belteshazzar. Baal will protect. Yeah. Totally the opposite mm -hmm. of what his name meant in the Hebrew. Now, Hananiah means God is gracious. Mm -hmm. Aren't you grateful yeah. for the grace of Almighty God this morning? Aren't you grateful that God saw fit to extend His grace in your life? Yeah. Boy, I tell you, I remember that day when I was saved. Yeah. Oh, I came to an old-fashioned altar. I was in Simbuk, Germany in the Air Force. I came down and bowed on this side of the altar and I changed worlds. I mean, I, the Lord yeah. really saved me. Yes. Now, before that, I thought I was saved. Mm -hmm. I thought I was. I mean, you know, that night I came to church to get somebody off my back. They had been inviting me to church and they'd tell me to come and I came in like this, brother Paul. Yeah. You ever seen them like that? I was like that. Bless me if you can. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I was like. I was sitting there just like that. Can I sit right here? Yeah. All right. I, I was sitting there in that pew like this, you know. Bless me if you can. <laughs> well, the preacher started preaching and I got like this. Yeah. yeah. He's reading my mail. Yeah. And then I was like this. Yeah. And before I knew it, yeah. before I knew it, I was still over here. Amen. I was on my knees Amen. with my hands in the air yeah. saying, God, save this old wretched sinner. You see, I had a head knowledge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had God in my head, yeah. but He hadn't yet reached down in my heart. Amen. Aren't you grateful for the grace of God this morning? Amen. And I, it means God is gracious, but they changed His name to inspired of a coup. A spy inspired of a coup. Totally the opposite of uh, God is gracious. Mishael means who is like God. Now, I don't know about you, but I know that one day 
I'm going to see him as he is. My Bible tells me, my Bible tells me that as he is, so, so shall we be. Listen, he's holy. He says for you and I to be holy. Not only uh, is his name who is like God, but they changed it to Meshach. Belonging to a coup. Completely the opposite change. There in Azariah, God is my help. Yeah, amen. I want you to think about that for just a minute. It wasn't your own efforts that got you here this morning. You're right. It wasn't your own efforts that allowed me to put this, this message together so that you could hear it today. It's no accident, brother and sister, you're here today. Amen. It's no accident that we stand in a place of need this morning. It's no accident that God is your help. Amen. It's no accident. And he, they changed his name to Abednego, servant of Nego, a false god. Amen. So I say to you that there is something in a name yeah, yeah. this morning. And so we see here that in verse number 8 it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had uh, brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs, and the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking uh, than the children which are of your sword? Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented uh, to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, the countenance appeared fair and fatter and flesh than all the children which did eat the portion yeah. of the king's meat. Can I stop right there and say, listen, it's not all about that old meat, that king's meat, is it? It's not about that filet mignon. I like a little round steak every now and then, don't you? Yeah. That's baloney for you folks who don't know what I'm talking about. Go ahead and say it this morning is this. You don't have to eat at the king's table. To be French and to be to be a pure fatter and more healthy. Listen, you don't have to eat at the world at King's table when you can eat at the King of King's Amen. table. All you've got to do is open this book, uh, this blessed old book. Man, I'm dropping everything up here this morning. That's because my hand was shaking. Did y'all see it? <laughs> what I'm saying is this. These men, these young men, look fairer than the others. It says, uh, Thus Melzar, verse 16, took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding and all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in three years, if you remember, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. Oh my! Yeah. In all and in all matters of wisdom and understanding, the king inquired of them. He found them ten times better than all the magicians Amen. and astrologers, and were in all that were in all the realm. And Daniel continued even under the first year of King Cyrus. Now look with me, if you will, in chapter number two, I'm trying to paint a picture here of what's happening. These young men, these four men, Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, these four men have made a choice. We're going to serve Jehovah God. We're going to depend on Him. We're going to trust Him for the things that we need. We're not going to defile ourselves with the king's meat. We're going to follow the teachings and the, and the promises and the precepts of God's Word. We're going to stick with Jehovah. We're going to believe Him. Now look with me in chapter 2, verse number 49. The Bible says, Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Amen. This is a place of honor, folks. He sat in a place of counsel uh, amongst, the, amongst the leaders and the hierarchy, if you will, of that day. But chapter 3 goes on to say, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to get, uh, gather together the princes and the governors and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Oh, what a mighty thing this was. He lay 90 foot tall with a big old wide statue. I, I don't know if it was of himself or not. Some say it was. I'm not sure about that. Probably was. Don't surprise me a bit in the day and age that we're talking about here. But what I'm saying is he called all these people together and he wanted them to do something. Now notice with me in verse number 3. It says, Then the princes and the governors and captains and judges and the treasurers, counselors the sheriffs and all the rulers of the province were gathered together under the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded. Now this is not a suggestion. Right. This is not saying, well, if you want to, go ahead. Yeah. No, this is not one of them things. This is a red light. Go ahead. Bro. You have to stop at a red light. Now there's a lot of people that don't stop at red lights. <laughs> you know, let me stop right here, commercial break. Why don't people give a turn signal anymore? <laughs> Ain't that the beatin' thing? Anyway, I don't know why I've done that, but hey, that's good news this morning. Listen, Christians ought to give a turn signal. Don't matter if you turn left or turn right, give a turn signal. But anyway, uh, the Bible says here that he called all these men together. He said the herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, verse 4, O people, nations, and languages, uh, that at, at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sap, the psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, he fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship it shall the same hour be cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cord and the flute, the harp, the sap up, uh, the psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people of uh, the nations and languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. You see, there was thousands. Can you imagine this? Picture this in your mind. Thousands of people, a 90 foot tall statue, and they play every instrument they can find, yeah. and all these people bow down to it. They bow down to it. Yeah. They worship this image. But can I say to you this morning, there was three yeah. that stood out that You're day. right, brother. They stood out like a neon sign on a dirt road. I'm telling you, they stood out. All those people were bowing down, and there they stood, yeah. tall. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't bow. Amen. Notice with me what happens here in, in, in the latter part of this chapter, verse number 8. It says, Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, King, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship thou, uh, that he should be cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom uh, thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men, uh, 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 men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, you should be cast the same hour in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Yeah. Yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, verse 16, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. He says, listen, we have no fear. We want to answer you right now. He said, don't sound all those instruments. There's no need because we're not going back. There you go. He said, there's no need in you going through all that ritual. I mean, he offers them a little grace there in that verse there, verse number 15. He says, now, if you be ready. He said, since I brought you here and I pointed out what you've been doing, if now you're ready to bow, whenever you hear these instruments, you bow down. They said, hey, listen, 
No, don't even have to worry about it. We're not careful. He Amen. said, we're not careful to ask you. I'm not afraid to tell you, King, I'm not going to bow down Amen. to that image that you've set up. And can I say, dear Christian, we better not bow down Amen. to the images of this world. Amen. We better not bow down to the things that this world has to offer. Now, there's a lot of good out there. Yeah. There's a lot of good things in this world. But I say to you and I submit to you today, there's some that are bowing down to those things. Oh, there's God's people that are bowing down. To Preach on, brother. Listen, we as God's children need to stand just like these three boys did. We need to say we're not careful. We're not afraid. Why were they not afraid? Look at verse number 17. It says, if it be so, you can throw me in that fiery furnace if you want to, they said, but our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Yes. And He will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. You see, what I'm talking about this morning is they said he can save us from the fire or we can perish in the fire, but we're not going to bow. You see, this morning what I'm saying to you is there's a hierarchy in our world today that wants us to bow down. There's, a, there's people in our nation today that are trying their best to suppress Amen. the Christian. Can I stop right here and say that flag in South Carolina didn't kill anybody? Yeah. Yeah. That flag in South Carolina yeah. didn't kill a soul. Right. I tell you, it was hate that killed. Yeah. Guns don't kill people, people kill people. Yeah. And I'm, I'm ashamed, I am ashamed to be an American in days where it's okay to continue to kill unborn children. Yeah. I'm ashamed to be a nation that says uh, that, it's, that it's okay for a man to marry a man. Yeah. I'm ashamed. Go ahead. Try. I'm ashamed in a nation that'll let a man and a man adopt a child and raise that child up in such an abominable relationship. Yeah. I'm ashamed. Go ahead. My Bible yeah. tells me. My Bible tells me that if we don't stand, yeah. just like these three men stood, if we don't stand for something, as the old country song says, we're gonna fall for anything. Yeah. Yeah. And my brother, we fall. Yeah. We Amen. have fallen Amen. for anything. I haven't even got to my message. Go ahead, brother. This You're is just right. an introduction. Well, I'm glad we started at 10. <laughs> How about that? But what I'm saying here is this this morning. We've got to stand up, folks. These three young boys had heard from God. They had gotten along sometime in their life. Somebody had showed them the book. Somebody had taught them right from wrong. My mama done that to me with a fly swatter and a belt and sometimes a shoe. And she could throw a shoe around the corner. There's no doubt about it. Any of y'all children that are wondering if mamas have got eyes in the back of their head, pull their hair back. It's that. They can see. What I'm saying this morning is we got to stay. Because listen, whether you're looking or I'm looking, God sees everything. Amen. He sees all things. We can't hide anything from Him. And these three said, hey, we're not careful to answer you. Whether we die in that fire or not, we're going to serve Amen. the God of heaven. Amen. Whether we die or not in that fire, we're going to serve Him. But He says in verse number 19, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. He was mad. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3, verse 19, He was mad. The form of His visage was changed to get Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You ever been like that? I've been like that before. Shame on me, but I have. Yes. Changed his visage, changed his opinion, changed his whole thought process. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it, wa that it was wont to be heated. Heat that baby up. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them in the burning fiery furnace. Yeah. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hoses, and their hats, and their other garments. And they were cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. 
and give old King Nebuchadnezzar one thing. He's a man of his word. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't change his opinion of these fellows. He followed his law, his decree. He followed everything to the letter. He threw them in that fiery furnace. He lost some of his mighty men even trying to do it. But, that's not the end of the story. Amen, brother. Amen. Boy, I'm glad that whenever old, old King Nebuchadnezzar sat back down on his throne, thinking I've done it, I've, I've showed all these people that I'm not going to put up with this stuff. I'm not going to put up with this junk. You're going you're gonna to follow my way or you can hit the highway. You ever heard that? Yeah. I, I probably said that at the time too. But what I'm saying this morning is this. Old Nebuchadnezzar sat back and said, Hey, look at my power. Look at my authority. Yeah. Look at what I can do. Yeah. But the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords said, Wait just a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Let me show you what I can do. Let me show you how powerful you are not, O King Nebuchadnezzar. Let me show you just what it's like to interfere amongst the God of heaven. To get in charge of something that's way bigger than you are. Let me just show you what I can do. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. Well, I like to be astonished, don't you? I tell you, you know what astonishes me? Every time I flip a jig or I throw a worm out there in the lake and I feel that little peck on the end of the line. <laughs> Any of you fellas like to feel it? Well, I tell you, there's something about it. Hey, something, you don't know whether it's you don't know whether it's a whopper or a dink. Do you? you don't know what it is. But it's just amazing. And every time you miss one, oh, that's a good one. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The one that gets away is always bigger than the one you yeah. catch. No, that's right. right. That's right. But what I'm saying this morning is old Nebuchadnezzar, he thought he was he thought he was the man. Yeah. And all of a sudden now he's astonished. He's astonished. And he rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselor, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Now picture in your mind what's happening. The king is sitting on his throne. And all of a sudden he, he knows that he's thrown three men in that fire. And he sees four. And listen, I don't know about you. But if I was Shadrach and Meshach, yeah. I mean, I'd be cutting a shine, wouldn't yeah. you? I'd be standing there with the King of all kings and the Lord of all. I can't dance. I don't believe there's a dancing leg connected to a praying knee, but I'm just saying to you this morning that they, I'll guarantee you that was dancing Jesus. Yeah. I don't know if it was a country song. I don't know what was a play, but I know it was Hallelujah to the Lamb this morning. <laughs> because there in the midst Go ahead, of the Lamb of Almighty God, right. he said, listen, he said, Did, didn't we not cast three down in the midst of the fire? They answered and said, True, O king. That's who we threw in there. It was three of them fellas. He answered and said, Lo. Imagine his tone of his voice changed a little bit. Yeah. Lo. Lo. Yeah. Lo, I see. I see four men loose. Oh, me walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt. Now you remember how hot that furnace was. Seven times. Seven times. Number seven is the number of perfection in it, Brother Claudia. It's hot now. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in there. It's hot enough down here someday. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is God was holding some hands. Yeah. Yeah. You see, God's more powerful than the fire. Yeah. Amen. God's more powerful than the storm that's in your life this morning. Right. God's more powerful than anything you face in this life. He's more powerful. You know why I can say that? Because I've faced some trials in my life. I've seen God do things that never felt possible. But He's God. Yes, He is. He's God. You see, this morning we serve a living God. Amen. He's not dead. Amen. Oh, the world wants Him to be dead. They're trying to suppress everything we do. But they'll not change this book. Yeah. Now they're trying to change this book. Yeah. I tell you, I appreciate the King James Bible. Yeah. It ain't man right there. Yeah. That's right. There's a couple of you reading. I heard that. Good old King James Bible. You see, what they're trying to do is they're trying to change this yeah. to fit their, fit their lifestyle. That's right. You're right. All me. Preach on, brother. Revelation tells me that's a dangerous business when you go changing the Word of God. Yeah. But these three men were walking in the midst of the fire. The Bible says they had no hurt. He says that the form, I can preach right there for an hour. Go ahead, brother. And the form of the fourth is like 
the Son of God. Amen. Amen. The form <laughs> of the form yeah. is like the Son of God. Amen. You know, I remember my Bible telling me that there was a day in the beginning when the, when the earth was without form mm -hmm. and void. And over there about the sixth day, God reached down into the dirt and the clay and this ground, this earth. And He formed something. Mm -hmm. Yes, He did, brother. In His own image. Yes. The Bible says He breathed the breath of life into that soul, into that body. And that, that body became a living soul in His own image, in His own likeness. That's why I believe on Nebuchadnezzar can say the form of the fourth thing like the Son of God. Now, I want to tell you something this morning. It don't matter where you're going in life. It doesn't matter what, you, what your job is. It doesn't matter what your financial situation is. God is the God of heaven. And he loves you. It doesn't matter how much you have or how much you don't have. There's no big eyes and little U's in God's economy. These three little Hebrew boys, all they done was be faithful to God. That's all they done. They didn't have a whole lot. But they had God. Yes. And in my economy, that makes them rich. Amen, that makes them rich. You may not have a whole lot this morning. You may not have anything. But uh, if you've got God, you're a whole lot more better off than those folks up in Washington ever thought they'd be. Now, all those fellows on Wall Street, even Donald Trump, don't have nothing on them. Because listen, your father owns the cattle of the family. Uh, your father owns uh, all things. And we just give us uh, these, uh, these little things just to borrow for a little while. But it says here in verse number 26, Then Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, He's a little humble about this. Like I say, he's not as proud as he was over there when he was sitting down on his throne. He's just, he's just, a, he's just a, a little bit more humble man. And I can imagine in his voice he said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, hey, y'all come over here. These servants of the Most High God. Now I want you to think about something and I'll close. Look at verse number 15 in the latter part. Remember what old Nebuchadnezzar said? Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Yeah. Who is that God? I believe he found out, don't you? Yes, he did. I believe he found out who that God was because notice what he said. Ye servants of the Most High God. Yeah. That little statue that he made, he realized wasn't as important as he thought it was. It wasn't cutting the mustard anymore. <laughs> he had seen something that day that that old statue that was made with man's hands could never do. He seen something that day that Buddha couldn't do. He seen something that day that Muhammad couldn't do. Uh oh, I'm going to go to jail. Sure enough, I'm being racist. <laughs> Do you know peanut butter and jelly sandwich is racist now? Do you know that? Yeah. Boy, a peanut butter and cracker really would be, wouldn't it? Let's move right off. Let's move right off. I'm a racist, brother. I sure ain't glad they laugh. I'm not saying it's bad. Man. <laughs> Ye servants of the Most High God. Ye servants of the Most High God. Come forth and come here. Now I'm sure Nebuchadnezzar is still standing a good distance from this hot fire, don't you? I'm sure he's 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 whispered at a shaft, saying, "Hey, fellas, y'all come over here." That's kind of like a fellow was whenever I worked for the sheriff's department. They're going to get a bomb dog and ask him if he's interested in. Uh, being a hammer for that bomb dog. He asked him how long the leash was. That's exactly the way I would be. But what I'm saying this morning is, here, here's, what, here's what I believe the Lord's trying to do. I believe the Lord's trying to convince us in this story that He's bigger than our problem. Amen. I believe He's bigger than anything you face in this year. I believe that He can handle your financial situation better than we can if we'll just be faithful. And give him what we're supposed to give. I believe that he can heal marriages. Amen. I believe that he can save those wayward children. Amen. I believe that he can heal and bring healing to those that are bound by drugs and alcohol. Amen. I believe he can heal your marriage today. Right. If it's a problem in your marriage. 
I believe he can make a good marriage better. I couldn't have a better marriage than what I've got. And I've got a woman that loves me. And that, look at me. Y'all to be able to tell. I mean, but anyway, trying to be serious here. <laughs> but I believe the Lord's trying to tell us something today. And I believe that something is this. In the midst of all that's going on around us in our society, in the midst of what we see, the foundation of this country, in the midst of what we see, in the midst of the trouble and the turmoil of life, let's not look down. Let's look up. Amen. Let's not put our faith in man and Washington and what they're going to do. Amen. Let's put our faith in the King of Kings yes. Amen. and the Lord of Lords. Because we see in our story today that the kings of this earth can be astonished yeah, at what He can do. But let's make it a little more personal. What is it that's going on in your life today that's got you bowing down to something besides the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? What is it that's got you bogged and, and, and got you so, so, so burdened down that you're willing to compromise the Word of God and the faith that He's that He's given you, the grace that He's extended, the mercy. You know, so often we forsake what we need the most to run to what we don't need. Yeah, why is it, by the way, let me ask this question, why is it that when trouble comes, whenever uh, trials come, we run away from the house of God instead of to yeah. yeah. the house of God? You're right, why is that? Because our faith is not in God. Amen. Our faith is in oh my my. If I don't have enough of this, I can't make it. Oh my. And I say, God's been good to me. God's been good to you. And God has blessed America. Yes, He has. And I pray that America will bless God once again. But let me ask you personally, as the musicians come, what is it in your life that's got you astonished? What is it that's got you <coughs> bowing down to things instead of the King of Kings and the Lord of oh, Lords? What is it in your life today that needs the hand of God upon? With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, please. In the quietness of this moment, the Holy Spirit is moving. If God spoke into your heart this morning, and there's something in your life that you want to talk to the Lord about, won't you come? Won't you come to an altar where you can meet God? Maybe you need to weep a little this morning over the things, the failures in your life. Maybe you need to ask God to forgive you for something. Maybe you bowed down when you stood as should have stood. Maybe you compromised when you should have turned to the Lord and focused on Him and said, I'm not going to bow. I may burn, but I'm not going to bow. Who may have a need this morning of salvation in their life? Are you here this morning and you need that King of all kings to come and be the Lord of your life? Are you saved this morning? Do you know Him? As your musicians play this morning, do you have a need? Do you have a need? Has God spoken to your heart this morning? Is there something nudging you to come? Please don't wait. Just come. You come. 